We continue with our discussion on measuring risk. Here we will look at credit risk. So some quick points on credit risk. Credit risk arises when one party is subject to losses if its counterparty fails to deliver the promised payment or fails to carry out a contract due to a default. So one would associate risk of default with credit risk. Credit risk often appears in bond portfolio or in OTC derivatives contract. In the case of bond investment, there's always a possibility that the issuer might fail to deliver the promised payment. Or let's say in the case of OTC derivative, the losing party might fail to honor its obligations. So there's clearly going to be credit risk in both. Credit risk has two important dimensions, the likelihood of default and the amount of loss due to a default given that the default occurs. Remember, likelihood of default, also known as the probability of default, and the amount of loss due to a default given a default, which is known as loss given default, uh, both are important values to be taken into account to get a sense of credit risk. In fact, when we combine loss given default with probability of default, we get expected loss. So that gives us a good sense of the credit risk exposure. For instance, if I have a portfolio and I assume that the probability of default is 5% and the loss given default is 40%, there is an expected loss of 2% as far as my credit portfolio is concerned. So there are two types of credit risk, current credit risk, potential credit risk. Let's understand these two terms. Current credit risk, also known as the jump to default risk, is the risk of ongoing default or a pending default that will occur in the immediate future. So we would associate current credit risk with the current payments. Compare it to potential credit risk, which is going to be associated with future payments. So potential credit risk is the risk of potential default in the future. So current credit risk is what we associate with a current default. Potential credit risk is what we would associate with possible default sometime in the future. For instance, in a forward contract, there is no payment that is made during the intermediate period. So there would be no current credit risk. Once into uh, the life of the contract, there would be one party which would be gaining, the other party which would be losing. So the party which is gaining is exposed to credit risk because there's always a possibility that the losing party would fail to honor its obligation. So there we have potential credit risk, but no current credit risk. Let's take the example of a bond investment where the bond issuer continues to make good the regular coupon payment. So we realize that there is no current credit risk, but then there is definitely potential credit risk. Why? Because going forward, the credit quality of the issuer may decline and hence the issuer can possibly default sometime in the future. So the bondholder would be exposed to potential credit risk. Let's now take uh, uh, the, the instance of cross default provision, which is quite interesting because out here the credit risk could be viewed as a hybrid of current credit risk and potential credit risk. Let's first understand cross default provision. If we have a cross default provision, it would imply that when the borrower defaults on one creditor, it would amount to having defaulted on all the other creditors. So. If I'm one of the creditors and the counterparty, which essentially is the borrower, defaults on some other creditor, that would amount to having defaulted on my exposure as well. So should I consider it as current credit risk or potential credit risk? In fact, we would consider it as a blend of the two. Credit VAR. Credit VAR, very similar to the concept of VAR. It measures the minimum amount of loss due to a credit risk over a reporting period with a given probability. So the definition is very similar to that of value at risk. For instance, if we compute the 5% annual credit VAR of our portfolio and it turns out to be 1 million, it would imply that there is a 5% probability that my portfolio would witness a loss, would, would witness a loss of 1 million or more due to defaults over the next one year. 
Now, credit VAR is going to be located in the upper tail, unlike the VAR, traditional VAR, which is essentially associated with downside risk measure and would be located in the lower tail. Your credit VAR would be located in the upper tail. And that's pretty much easy to understand. Think of it, guys. If I have a derivative position and I happen to lose, there is no credit risk that I'm exposed to. It's the counterparty which is exposed to credit risk. I would be exposed to credit risk only if I'm gaining in, 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 in the contract. So if I have a winning position in a derivative contract, that's when the counterparty uh, owes me a certain amount of money, owes me a certain value, and that's when I would be exposed to credit risk. So clearly, credit risk, or rather credit war, would be located on the upper tail. Let's now look at credit risk, which would be there in various types of derivatives contract. To begin with, let's look at the credit risk of a forward contract. Now remember guys, in a forward contract, there is no intermediate cash flows. So you enter into a forward contract and the settlement would take place at certain time. Let's call it T. Now at time zero, the value of the contract is zero because uh, the, the forward contract at inception has a zero value. So the two parties uh, don't really owe anything to each other. So that's when the credit risk is zero. But the potential credit risk still exists because going into the life of the contract, there would be one party which would be gaining, the other party which would be losing. And clearly, the winning and the losing positions can again change over time. So in a forward contract, potentially both the long party and the short party are exposed to the credit risk of the other party. In other words, the counterparty credit risk. Uh, given that there is no mark to market, so the, the credit risk exposure would build up over time and it would tend to peak out the second half. So remember, there would be potential credit risk in a forward contract, but there would be no current credit risk. The current credit risk would occur only at the time of settlement. Or how would we gauge the value of potential credit risk? Well, that could be gauged by looking at the value of the forward contract. So let's look at this example with respect to a forward contract. Here you have the spot gold price at $1,200 and we have the one year risk free rate as 4%. Let's first compute what could be the theoretical price of a one year forward. Assuming that there is no storage cost, no convenience, we can easily compute the forward price to be 1200 into one plus the risk free rate and turns out to be $1,248 per unit. So let's say I have taken a long position. So I went long gold forward at $1,248 per unit. Now, three months into the contract, the spot price of gold comes down to $1,180. That's bad news for me because I happen to lose as far as my forward position is concerned. So what's my loss? The value of the contract at that point of time is going to be the spot price minus the present value of the contracted price. So it would be 1180 minus the present value of 1248. So once we compute that, it turns out to be 1180 minus 1211.7.8 approximately. And that results in a loss of $31.7 for me. So as somebody who's holding a long position, I seem to lose $31.7 on the contract. The person who had gone short, the counterparty, seems to gain $31.7. So am I exposed to any credit risk? The answer is no. It's a short party which bears the credit risk because a long party that is that, that happens to be me, uh, I might default on the payment of the liability. And the risk, the credit risk which the short party is exposed to would be in the form of potential credit risk because while there is no payment which is due currently, there would be potentially some payment that would be made at the time of settlement.